Uh, we'll look at some of those big issues there on, on the unthinkable in a moment. But let's start off, obviously, with North Korea. That's the issue of the moment. Mm -hmm. You've been dealing with this on and off for decades. Where do you rank this situation right now? How serious? So I continue to think the risk of actual war is very low because no one would benefit from it. For the North Koreans, it would be fatal. And for the U.S. and its allies, it would be incredibly costly. But we're seeing a lot of posturing. And my hope is that this is posturing as a prelude to eventually resuming negotiations. A lot will depend on Kim Jong-un's calculations. He's demonstrated a very credible nuclear capability with five nuclear tests. He's begun to demonstrate a long-range missile capability. But the cost of that has been much more serious economic sanctions, which the Chinese have been prepared to support. So at some point, will Kim Jong-un decide he can come back to the bargaining table with a strong position and look to see what he can get in return for accepting limits or a freeze on his nuclear program? I don't know that we're there yet. I think that Kim Jong-un has to demonstrate that he you know, can't be uh, intimidated by the Security Council. So I think we're likely to see another round of missile tests, but they may be short-range or medium-range missile tests as opposed to long-range tests, which triggered the most recent U.N. Security Council resolution. And well, we Guam see, would be very provocative in that It sense. would be extremely provocative. Um, at the same time, I think we see the Trump administration, despite all the tough talk, we've seen indications that they're trying to maneuver toward a resumption of diplomacy. Tillerson has basically said publicly, if Kim Jong-un would just pause his testing program, the U.S. is prepared to open talks. And we know that there are private, low-level conversations going on right now between the State Department and, and North Koreans in New York. And just in terms of how we got here, I mean, you were part of the conversation in the Obama White House. Right. Uh, of course, Iran was a big priority. Yes. Uh, there were many other things going on. To what extent do you think it's fair to say the North Korean issue was pushed onto the back burner under Obama? I mean, I would say the Obama administration took several runs at an effort to negotiate with North Korea, and they all ended unhappily. The first run ended after the sinking of the Chanan, a South Korean vessel. Um, then the most successful resulted in an actual agreement, the so-called Leap Day Agreement of February 2012, where the U.S. provided humanitarian assistance, the North Koreans agreed to suspend testing and freeze their nuclear program, and Kim Jong-un violated the agreement three weeks after it was done. So I think at the end of the Obama administration, the conclusion was that there was just no value in talking to North Korea until more leverage was built up. But the missile testing continued uh, yes. and unchecked in that As sense. I say, I think you've seen two processes happening at the same time. Kim Jong-un has accelerated his missile testing program in order to strengthen his capability, and the sanctions have begun to build up. You mentioned there the likelihood of reverting to the diplomatic approach. You quoted Rex Tillerson. But, I mean, how on earth do we read these statements from President Trump? I mean, is he... I mean, the others all seem to be behaving right. like the sort of Washington figures like yourself that we're used to. But this is totally different, isn't it? Is it dangerous in itself? You know, in substance, Trump is not saying anything different than presidents always say, which is that the U.S. will defend itself and its allies. But Trump is doing it in a way that has a kind of locker room quality to it. And I think my concern is that we don't want, I, I hate to see the President of the United States put himself in a position where he's being equated with Kim Jong-un. The North Koreans are famous for their bluster. And I think it's important that uh, Trump not go too far in terms of making our allies nervous. There's some value in making the Chinese nervous, so they'll support economic sanctions as a way to get diplomacy started. But I think if you go too far with bellicose rhetoric... You, you've uh, spent a lifetime working on proliferation. Yeah. Is it ultimately just delaying the inevitable that other countries will get the bomb and that eventually one of them will use it? I think, you know, in some cases, countries have made the decision to give up nuclear weapons programs. South Africa is a very good example. South Korea, Taiwan. In other cases, U.S. efforts have failed. Pakistan, Israel, India, North Korea. So you never really know when you start whether it's going to succeed or fail. You've got to play out your hand, and at the end of the day, you'll know. Gary Samuel, thank you so much. Thank you.